And Dr. Dan Tomlinson is joining us now to answer some of your medical questions. Thanks for being here. You bet. We've got a good one tonight. We have a couple, couple of good, good ones. ones. Yeah. Yes. Our first question tonight, how much caffeine is too <laughs> much? And uh, kind of the second question yeah. to that, should uh, parents allow children to have caffeine? <laughs> well, I, I don't even... I guess I'll try to answer. First of all, caffeine is probably, the, well, it is the world's most popular drug. It's the one that's the most abused. But let's back down a little bit because it generally doesn't impair people. So uh, people get addicted to it, but it's not like other drugs where they have a lot of problems. But it does cause problems. Uh, if you have a tendency toward high blood pressure, it can make it worse. If you have seizures, you can, it will lower the seizure disorder, uh, the threshold. So you can, you can get seizures from it. So to answer the question, the, the actual dose, uh, moderation is, is the key word for caffeine. Plus it hangs around for about six or seven hours. So have it before four in the afternoon or you're going to ruin your sleep and should have no more than about 200 milligrams. So a cup of coffee is about 100 to 120 milligrams. Uh, Pepsi and Coke is 50 milligrams. Mountain Dew, 80 milligrams. So you can do the math if you're shooting for that 200. Once you get to three to 400, you're going to start having jitters and get anxious and it's not good for you. Now the second part of that question was the kiddies. Right. No way. This is a serious, this is a real drug. Kids shouldn't be doing it. I think about the time you want to start thinking about caffeine mm -hmm. is when you hit college and you want to get uh, good grades. Right. Uh, I'm not even so sure it's so great in high school. Because uh, I know a lot of um, you know teenagers out there are drinking you know the yeah, mochas yeah. and the Red Bulls and stuff like that. Not Just good. Uh, you know, they, you know, they, they, they all have a lot of calories in them too. Uh, I wouldn't recommend that as a, as a doctor. It is a real drug. Again, it's not particularly dangerous. But, you know, kids are already sharp. It's for right. old folks like us that need a little jolt, uh, <laughs> not for the youngsters. Love that morning cup of coffee, right? Yeah, and All after right. lunch. Too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, our second question. Springtime. We were just talking about springtime. Sure. Kind of uh, rolls around uh, and it brings allergies for right. a lot of people. So what causes those allergies and what can we okay. do to avoid or ease the symptoms? Immune system. Uh, you, our, our immune system recognizes things that are foreign and generally it's a good thing. Bacteria and viruses, uh, our immune system will attack. but. Uh, also, there's other uh, molecules, mainly in grasses and pollens, that the nasal passages recognize as foreign and, and set up an allergic reaction, which we really don't really need to have happen. And so um, that's the cause of allergies, and you need antihistamines or nasal steroids. Both of those would be safe. Uh, they have the non-sedating uh, antihistamines like Claritin mm -hmm. and Zyrtec that people can get over the counter now. So really, if you find yourself suffering from allergies, uh, get some Zyrtec, get some Claritin, or get a prescription for some uh, Flonase, and you don't have to be uncomfortable. Yeah, a lot of people, it's pretty miserable. Yeah, for yeah them. it really is. And, uh, and it's, it's going to be a problem until the middle of July, and then the grass allergies right. go away. All right. Dr. Dan, thank you. you bet. And Dr. Dan joins us each Monday to answer your medical questions. If you have a question, you may write or email them at the addresses on your screen. You may also post the question on our News 10 Facebook page.